and I will um, start pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18, this meeting of the TAC is conducted via remote participation. Roll call to check. Oh, is that what I have to do? I don't say that, I actually do that. Oh, oh everyone, make sure everyone's um, video and audio is working properly. Um, this meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, and this is being recorded to the cloud. Is that right, Amber? Yeah, you should. Yes. Um, so this uh, calling the uh, April 1st meeting of the TAC to order. Um, and is there anyone on the uh, participating remotely or on the phone, Amber? I, I don't know if I can see that. Um, I don't see no anybody on okay. the phone. Yeah, I made yeah, there is. a co-host. Yep, so you should see an attendee. Now, the attendees, you can keep them as an attendee or you can bring them as a panelist. Um, oh. It's entirely okay. up to you. You can allow them to speak as an attendee. So. Okay, so I, I'm... Uh, uh, um, Just click on participants yeah. and you should be able to see everybody. Okay, doke. Now I see everyone, but I don't see anyone. Oh, attendee, okay. We, um, hi, we can allow Holden. Holden, what's your um, last name? I just don't see it all here. Hi, uh, yeah, my last name is Spiricino. Great, thank you. Um, nice welcome. Nice to meet you all. Of course, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay, and so um, the first uh, order of business if, is if there are any announcements, which I have none. Okay, um, and um, the second is uh, public comment. So Holden, did you have anything that you, did you, are you attending for a specific topic? Would you like to speak and say anything at this moment? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a public comment. Okay. I was just attending to learn more about the right. committee. I'm, I'm moving to Amherst uh, in April and was just curious about uh, the type of work you do. Great, thank you. So, are you uh, like a, a, a some kind of expert in 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 public transportation? Do you bike? Are you a walker? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I guess I I I bike and walk and drive. Um, right. I think I I think I bike more than most people. I would say, but yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. No so expertise in in particular. <laughs> Most of us, some of us have expertise, but most of us are just here um, because we care about the transportation network in town and making it accessible to all. So um, thanks for your participation. Um, so um, the really the, the thing that we're gonna most um, work on today is our, um, uh, I'm gonna give Tracy the floor in just a moment and she's going to share with us the results of the, um, the results of the, the, uh, the survey that we all took about the topics um, that we're going to um, discuss and, and include in our letter to the um, TSO about the Pomeroy intersection and the kind of pluses and minuses of, of um, kind of the two, a signalized intersection and a roundabout. So uh, Tracy, do you wanna, I, do you wanna tell us the results of that? Hi, I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Um, Can you? Yep, I'm doing it right now. Okay, can you guys see that? Yep. So, um, so what happened was after the last meeting, Aaron had sent around his list of the 11 priorities um, that he felt came out of the last meeting. And, um, and he asked in his email, he asked people to um, make any comments they had about those 11 priorities to Kim before this meeting. So then Kim only heard from one person. Yay, Bruce. For <laughs> in. And I had missed that part of the email, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, but then also, I just thought it would be a kind of quick and easy way just to do this quickie survey um, and just see of those 11 items that Aaron listed, you know, what were people's top priorities? 
just to help frame our letter a little. It seemed, you know, one that some of his categories were overlapping, but then also I think 11 points may be like too many for us to just focus on in terms of our priorities. So on the screen, you can see, so we did get everybody to fill out the survey. Thank you. Um, and you can, so it's just the, you know, the top column show priority one, priority two, priority three, priority four. I mean, I could have picked more priorities. Um, and I thought we could just kind of go through them quickly and then also just talk about, you know, if we are going to pull out a few key points we want to emphasize in our letter to the TSO and to the council, you know, where we want to focus. So in terms of the top priority, I mean, it seemed that almost everybody identified that the pedestrian crosswalk safety and access was like their top priority, right? So five of the six of us said that. Um, and that, <clears throat> so that was the, by far the biggest. Um, and that's something, I mean, in terms of the pedestrian access, like every presentation I've seen on the projects and as staff talk about it, um, from Chris Bessip to Guilford Mooring to Jason Skills, like everybody is emphasizing about all the pedestrian improvements that will be there, including the sidewalk and the crosswalks and just access in general. Um, so then the next one, you know, the next one, one of the next ones that came up in terms of the top four, I just, I, I just tried to group them and just kind of count how many people mentioned. So, you know, people did mention the accessibility for the visually and mobility impaired. Um, and then like half of us also talked about emissions, you know, intersection efficiency and... Uh, you know, Tracy, to me, like yeah. the, the accessibility... Yes. ...was, you know, part and parcel of the pedestrian safety, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, right. yeah. I, I don't think we want to, given comments that have been made publicly right uh, on this i think we kind of want to bring that up it's just like we're not ignoring that that's it's just it is what it is the same with efficiency and uh the green aspects of mm -hmm. what we can sure. achieve it, it's absolutely. part and parcel of it you know yeah yeah actually uh, absolutely i mean i think that you know one thing is on your first comment in terms of um so I think there are, are a few differences, you know, in terms of the pedestrian safety and the accessibility and safety for like visually and mobility impaired people, because, you know, if you look at the research, a lot of people will say that <clears throat> um, the roundabouts are safer for pedestrians, like generally speaking, just because, you know, as you have a roundabout, the traffic speed has to slow down uh -huh. and you can't have like high speed crashes. Um, and, you know, if, for example, like at the, at the, one of the forums the other day, like the Saturday forum, there was a former Amherst Montessori teacher who talked about how she had been like hit really badly crossing the street at that intersection and had like a near death experience. She had, you know, medical issues for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that one thing is that, I mean, as much as the literature and studies will show that it's really it's safer for pedestrians in general. I mean, there are some questions about how safe it is for visually and yeah, visually I think impaired it, people, yeah. Yeah, it just, it goes to how you address the implementation, right? No, of course. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, it is safer. You wanted to make it, I wouldn't say <clears throat> more safe, but you need to target the safety for specific no. aspects. Right, and, and that, so, that's, yeah, that's, and so one thing as I sent around in the email today, like one thing mm -hmm. that Guilford had mentioned at the Saturday forum is that the town is considering, you know, considering <laughs> that if there is a roundabout put at that intersection, that's a preferred alternative that they would look at some kind of crossing lights or signals such as the rapid. Right, um, yeah. Like mm -hmm. flashing beacons and stuff just to mm -hmm. make it safer. And, and yeah, and, and it's just the fact that to counter the, well, stoplights stop people when it's green people zoom through so it's it, in it, the, mm -hmm. the fact that the the roundabout continually keeps traffic at a speed that is I I indicative of a more of a more safe environment you know right kind of like swing away from that because you, yeah, yeah sure at specific points in time you do get safer areas but across yeah. a day it is not that way yeah no i think I I've also read some stuff about right turn on red being hazardous for folks with low vision, no vision. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right turn on red is definitely hazardous. 
So, so if you have a signaled intersection and you have right turn on red, you, you also have that that you have to mm -hmm. consider. Right. Um, and, but you and could we'll, say you could recommend that there be no right turn on red, right? So like, right, for example, right. I remember it even came up, I guess, before the Public Works Committee when that still existed at East Hadley Road in 116, like right near Groff Park, mm -hmm. that people, some people were saying, wow, I'm so annoyed and irritated by this right turn on red ban. Um, and I remember they went to the Public Works Committee and the Public Works Committee said, well, you know, it's near Groff Park and there's a lot of Young, you know, children and families and things crossing from East Hadley Road to Groff Park, and we're going to keep the right turn on red restriction as much as it displeased the person who had made the comment and brought it to the Public Works Committee. So, yeah, oh, it kind of gets yeah. to the thing that more, uh, Guilford was saying last week about people turning down, or two weeks ago, I should technically, um, you know, requesting that the oral alarms for. Mm -hmm. or alerts for the um, intersections be turned down, you know, or right. turned off, yeah. You know. So, Mark, is what point were you making about that? I can't remember now. It's too long. <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, sorry. I think it was the fact that, yes, we have these specific areas, but in in effect, a lot of them, you know, build off another one. They aren't exactly separate you know so we can't say that by say looking at pedestrian crosswalk safety we're ignoring um any of the visual impairment side or by looking for uh, traffic efficiency we're ignoring the environmental considerations the, right. they're, they're no, one in the same yeah yeah actually so i mean bernie when you brought up the right turn no right turn on red i mean i guess that could be one question like if we wanted as a committee to say in our letter you know, in the interest of pedestrian safety, like we do not support like allowing right turns on red or something. Would that make sense for us to do that as one of the things that we would include in our comments to the TSO and the council? I think you just have to, that goes in the mix as to cautions. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I caution. Think, I mean, I really like to think in terms, as best I can, think in terms of universal design. No, absolutely. You know, how many people can use this as opposed to, I, I sort of cringe every time people tell me that they have to be handicapped accessible. Having a handicapped father, I, you know, I, I cringe at that. I mean, if it's universal design, then anybody can use it. True. And, and that's that's the level of safety. We should start to, we should start to look at it. Right. I just caution because <laughs> you've got a standard intersection uh, with right turn on red. You, you haven't done folks who are, um, visually impaired or, or with some hearing difficulties, any, any necessarily any favors. Right, so, I mean, I think one thing is like Myra Ross and, and, you know, from the Disability Access Advisory Committees, as well as the people who've spoken from the Massachusetts Council for the Blind. So they have a preference for um, the, like the four-way signalized intersections you know, with pedestrian signals over roundabouts, just because there's always a period, like with those, there's always a period where the traffic is like completely stopped. And also it's easier, if it's a four-way intersection, it's easier to orient yourself in terms of how you cross. Um, so, I, I mean, one question I would have for the committee is, and, the, you know, in this question, an issue, a concern with this was mentioned at one of the forums is that, you know, if you have a roundabout, um, you can have these flashing lights and people can slow down and yield just, and they're already yielding and slowing down because of the trap, the, because they're going around the circle. But do, how do we feel as a committee? Do we have any opinion about the fact that there will never be like a period of time when there's no traffic? Like for, and, and I had heard too. So, I mean, some people were concerned about that from a pedestrian crossing standpoint, you know, just as some of the visually impaired people are concerned about it, but some people have been concerned about that just as, you know, a, a parent with children. But then also some of the business owners in that vicinity were also concerned that say, you know, it's just a certain time of day um, where there's a lot of traffic coming through. Like how will cars leaving, say one of their businesses that's on 116 and has to have to turn left across the traffic like, will there be, unlike a traffic light where the traffic will ebb and flow, like, will there be periods of time when it's safe for the exiting vehicles to turn left? Yeah. 
and that's that's going to be that'll be a problem with that'll be a <laughs> that's going to be a problem at at heavy drive times, regardless of what you have for an intersection there. Because, and I yeah. guess that's I mean I guess that's the question is. I mean, is it, that something like we would mention as a concern to, it, it, I mean, it, I think it's a legitimate concern, particularly as you said, at heavy drive periods. Sure. I, you just have to, well, the, the extreme example in my mind is, is um, uh, the end of the school day at the uh, Chinese language I'm school sorry. on Route 9, and people are trying to barrel out into that traffic. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's scary trying to get down Route 9 at that point in time. Um, and you'll have miniature versions of that because you've got several stores and businesses there and people are going to be coming in and out and there will be those times of the day. It's probably going to be uh, uh, two hours out of, out of 24 when it's going to be really difficult. Um, Regardless of what you've got uh, for traffic. Yeah, I mean. Oh, oh, can you hold on? Um, uh, Guilford has his hands up. Hand oh, up. Yeah. So there's only three corners of the intersection where you can't go to an opposite exit and make a right turn instead of making a left turn. Ah. So um, the intersect, the little section that has the school, the daycare now, they only have one entrance and one exit right. and that's out mm -hmm. onto Pomeroy. Right. So they have to enter and exit at Pomeroy. Um, Mission Cantina, the, for lack of a better term, Valley Transporter and the gas station, you can always go to another exit yeah. um, yeah. and go make a right turn out instead of having to make a left turn across traffic and then go through the intersection and re redirect yourself. So that's yeah. just something to keep in mind when you're saying that is it's not, you're not confined. There's no thing, nothing that says you have that's to make a, a left point. turn out any of them. Oh, but, but Gilbert, I think that, I mean, what some of the people who were making those comments were not businesses right at the intersection. They were businesses say, you know, going south or north on um, like west. the liquor store or like for yeah, like the liquor store or like say for example, um, the Amherst Office Park or things like that. So that they I guess their their question was at certain times of day, you know, if there's like a heavy flow of traffic and there's no gap because it's a roundabout, like is that gonna be a problem for like their people leaving? Too. But I don't think, I mean, naturally with a roundabout, there are yeah. gaps as, as people take, you know, Pomeroy in either direction, depending on the time of day, which will bring a, a natural gap to the traffic at that yeah. point, mm -hmm. right? Because the same thing happens <coughs> with the Triangle Street one, right? In yeah. the mornings, everyone's kind of coming in from uh, on the, I don't know, the, the wherever well, where they used to cross that intersection just straight to get onto um, North Pleasant. I forgot that. Triangle. Yeah, that intersection, that, yeah. Oh, from Triangle <coughs> onto North Pleasant, right? And, um, but there, you know, it, there is, there does become a gap because cars are coming from, you know, downtown, for example. Um, yeah, and people freak out when they see a roundabout and they slow down and they well, make a gap that way too. So. Yes, and that's, that's true. And <laughs> that's, that's a benefit. <laughs> brings another point um, that, you know, roundabouts also, you know, if, if someone's not familiar with it, right, they will slow down a lot. And you pay a lot more, I pay a mm -hmm. lot more attention as a driver at a roundabout than in a, um, even a regular intersection, so. Um, you know, there's that surprise kind of aspect of roundabouts. And so drivers are a little less, less sure, and they'll slow down and check out the whole oh. intersection. So this was the thing I thought was, I mean, one of the, some of the comments, you know, when people say that they don't like roundabouts or rotaries, and they talk about, you know, rotaries in Holyoke or wherever that really don't, aren't even similar, but even around Atkins and you know, people are saying, well, people are going, you know, 40 or 50 miles around the Atkins roundabouts. I really don't think they are. No. Because, I mean, even though those roundabouts are larger, I think, than the one that would be at this intersection. Yeah. Guilford, is that right? Right? They're pretty large. But you can't actually go around a roundabout that fast. No, you can't. I no. mean, you mm -hmm. have to slow down. Yeah, the diameter in Atkins is bigger. It's actually, when we designed it, it was a very early roundabout. And the standards were very conservative so it's actually designed as a two-lane roundabout and the really? internal the internal lane is actually the truck apron and the external lane is what you drive in right now 
So we were required to make it a two lane one for the future. So that's why you have a, a bigger radius on those two. Uh -huh. there. But then, I mean, another big difference I see is that this project at Pomeroy is going to have all these crosswalks and things. And if you look at those Atkins roundabouts, there's only the one crosswalk that goes from like the multi-use path on the west side of West Street, like to cross yeah. two Atkins. That's right. Yeah. So there's no other sidewalks, like there's no other crosswalks, like there's no pedestrians or anything. You're just crossing at that one point. And so mm -hmm. like, this is a much different, like this is designed as a village center. And I mean, oh, I don't yeah. recall yeah. what was at Atkins before, but but was, was it just stop signs before or something? It was. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm really glad that we have something safer there now because I can't imagine trying to go through that complicated intersection oh, with right. but stop signs. There is, you know, you, a lot of people do take that there. I mean, you, you have the same access issues that you were talking about, um, Guilford, with um, coming out of Atkins. And, you know, sometimes I come out and take a left in the, you know, towards the, towards the roundabout. Um, but there are two entrances there. I forgot, you know, you could go either direction, but people, yeah. So that becomes less of an issue because there are two exits. That makes sense. Um, so, so I'm sorry, we kind of got off track. We can keep going through no, this. Well, that, I mean, no, but, I think, no, I mean, it's all related, right? Uh -huh. It's all Taking related notes, in terms right? of what we're, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's the key, the key fact here is that the fact that the, this roundabout would be in an urban situation. So you should be going slower anyway. Atkins is right. in a rural place. Right. I mean, they are wide. You're not going to go just because of the geometry of it. You're not going to go around that, that fast. No, but, of course. But I that's mean, what people, but that's what people say. Yeah. Oh, we're round about it. It must be this giant thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. But I mean, you can't, you know, if you put a roundabout on a ring road, you can go around it at 40 or 50 miles an oh. hour if you want to, but we're not in that situation. You know, no, absolutely not. We're designing it to make traffic much, 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 yes. slower, you know, so yeah. And I would agree. Is that something that's stressed in these meetings, Guilford and Tracy? I guess you've been to them. You know that they are small. You know, smaller and well. And would it would it be more comparable to suggest that it would look more like the Triangle Street one rather than the Atkins ones? Is, well, once you say Triangle Street, you start a whole another group of people complaining <laughs> because they don't like. Well, it. Yeah, you, can you I go actually, to the? I would go to the yeah. the, the university one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no, or that even was pretty fear, big. like fearing and North, yeah, North yeah, Amherst, North Universe, whatever and, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there is this. I mean, there are some issues I think with the triangle, and just because it's way more complicated, it's not just like the straightforward like four legs. Right. So, yeah. like when I don't know who wrote this comment about how the roundabout just creates one lane to cross with an island and then another lane. Because there's some of the two of the legs at the Triangle Street intersection roundabout, it's actually like five legs a little bit because you cross so to a that's median the and then it's actually pretty complicated because if you're a pedestrian, you actually need to like, it's not a straight path, like you actually need to turn mm -hmm. at one of the islands and go like in a different, like a 90 degree different direction. So there are two of the legs at Triangle, in my perception, are there as you like a travel lane, a median, a travel lane. That's it. That's nice and simple, like the one, the East Pleasant end and the University North Pleasant end. But the other two sides, I mean, there are like five legs. It is a little complicated. And particularly the one going across Triangle, is that Triangle, like? Yeah. yeah, it has to do with the skew because the, yeah. there's yeah. It's not a 90 degree intersection. There's more of a skew there. No, yeah, sure. That's what causes those things to happen. Yeah, so um, maybe maybe you don't want to, but yeah. I mean, have like Guilford so in meetings, like have, because I really do think that people, you know, because they say, oh, that's a roundabout that I don't like, or, you know, not triangle, but even say Atkins, like that's the cars are faster and things like that. Like, it does seem like it would, it would help people to understand like that the footprint is smaller of this, even though they right. should, but that's I think I, people are just I, afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, and that's what I was thinking, just like giving a, a, a size estimate because the size also, like the, the Atkins ones, they don't feel like, it doesn't feel like homey because it's just this big empty space in the mm -hmm. middle and cars seem to just be zooming around. Whereas 
perhaps that one at the end of Amity now, you know, it feels a lot more intimate and because you mean fearing uh, fearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you know, that one feels like nicer and just, I don't know. So related to the size Guilford. So how, I mean, you probably, you probably don't know exactly, but like in terms of like, if there was a roundabout there, like how much taking land takings would be needed? Do you have like uh, a sense or? We're, we're taking, regardless of what intersection you do, uh -huh. you're going to take land. Um, I guess the thing is like how much, like, are you talking like five feet or like 10, you know, like. I, the only, the, the two sides that actually lose the most uh -huh. um, are going to be, um, well, the sides that have the most impact from a parking perspective is really the gas station. Uh -huh. the gas station is going to lose part of the little parking lot or, and part of their little area. They'll lose a lot more pavement than anybody else will. Um, if, you, if you look at the one, if you look at what's there at, um, Valley transporter, it's just grass in between the parking spaces. And most of that grass is going to go away. And you'll, they'll probably keep their spaces, although they may lose one or two of their spaces. Um, it looks like right now, just in the preliminary wor world, that Mission Cantina won't lose anything that's parking. They'll lose oh, grass. Everything's parking there, though. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> People park on the grass, right? Yeah. Well, they're gonna they're gonna lose some grass, but they're not gonna lose any of the pavement area they have. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that addresses one of the comments. Yeah. From the um, on sorry, speaking of the um, Amherst Engage website. Right. Yeah. Um, well, and yeah. And I mean, and also, so Mission Canteen, I mean, so, you know, because it does, that lot really does fill up because of Mission Cantina. I mean, where, where does the overflow oh. parking go or where can they well, go? Valley Transporter. Right. They go that way. Across the street. They I, park I everywhere. have personally parked across the street. Yeah. I was going to suggest that if, if we are, uh, recommending a roundabout as one of the options to say to make it as narrow as possible and make it appropriate for an urban setting there, there could be a sign for Pomeroy village in the center of it that could be illuminated at night perhaps oh you know to give a sense of place that's actually yeah. a really so nice now chris, idea yeah so Gilford, that's a question for you so chris bressif has said i mean there are people talking about you know signage and things like place signage that, that that might not be in this project right now as the project's focusing on the transportation infrastructure more. But. Um, um, it's money issue. No, mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, uh, Guilford, oh. do you know if there are any plans for that bit of land behind Valley Transporter between them and the landscaping? Guys? It's kind of just in limbo right now. So oh, okay. there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no plan. Yeah, okay. Um, so Tracy, are we giving you enough fodder for, um, I mean, I think so pretty your comments. Okay. I mean, we could, you know, I can write some stuff up and we can talk about, um, I mean, so I, I mean, I do, um, yeah, I mean, I think we're, I think we're on the right track, okay. right? Yeah. So, I mean, one question I have, and I guess it would be to Guilford is, you know, when I've heard Jason talk about the project, he has talked about how, for example, there's like bike lanes and that there's also likely to be like a path on the west side, a multi-use path on the west side of West Street, um, which would also, so that would be accessible to bicyclists who don't want to be in the road. Um, and then also some of the improved sidewalks can, so, I mean, one of the concerns I had is, well, I'd like to know a little bit more about where, where the multi-use path is, but then also just um, like what happens when you get to like the end of the improvement area. Like for example, like say you're going north from the intersection on West Street. And um, so is the multi-use path gonna be on that section or, or is it gonna be on the south section? Um, on it's, going, it's going to be on the west side of the road. Right. And it goes, it'll be on both sides of, Okay. but it's not going to go very far. Um, 
there's a book called where the sidewalk ends right yes that, that's kind of what you should think yeah <laughs> but see that's what i worry about a little is just you know when like for example if you were going north then you're going to hit plumbrook right where the pedestrian bridge is still closed and so i mean some of those you know sidewalks and paths and things are nice in general but then like they when they end so abruptly and that pedestrian bridge is a narrow point and you're crossing the wetlands and things um so i'm assuming the multi-use path like wouldn't go there's not enough room for it to go like past there's, sat north of the bridge is it is it's there it's not the it's not room it's money there's not enough money oh, okay to go yeah and so and what's happening with that bridge is that can is going to be reopened soon or someday <laughs> So what are what are pedestrians there supposed to do now? At the bridge? Walking south. When when they get to the bridge or the intersection? No, when they get I'm just I mean because that pedestrian bridge has been closed like since the summer. Right. Yeah. The, we I mean we made a we made a little lane in the road for it. We oh, took okay. the shoulder and they go in the road. Yeah. They go. We actually we had, we had an accident there when we put those barriers out there some uh, driver hit one of those barriers <gasps> and launched their car oops okay it's pretty big kind of should be able to see them, but I guess. the barriers yeah yeah, yeah. Well, and they when, have a lot of reflection <laughs> so and now so guilford as you're saying so in terms of like some like the sidewalks and things too because like currently right there's only the sidewalk like the sidewalk on the west side of West Street, like extends from the intersection, like all the way, basically all the way to Atkins. And, you know, some parts of it are more narrow and some are less. And then, you know, there's a section closest, like past Hampshire College and think it's like a big path that's been improved. But for this project, so there would be some improvement of that inner, the sidewalk, but it wouldn't extend very far beyond the intersection, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right now it's pretty limited to what will okay. happen. And at, what, least, at least it will like, you know, give people who are probably in the nearby businesses, you know, right. a sense of direction and be able to, you know, walk. And so will, will nine. there be sidewalks on the, like south of the intersection on West Street? Will there be the street? There, there are sidewalks on, what, on West Street going south of the intersection now. Right. On both sides. It's, it stops when you get to the second condominium or to the condos. It doesn't go much past the condos right there. Yep. Wait, south of the intersection, there's sidewalk. Yes. Oh, okay. And then there's a there's not much of a sidewalk north of the intersection on the east side because it's all parking lot. Right. Midway, there's no parking there really. And then it just, and then there's the mailbox and it just kind of ends, right? There's no sidewalk there. So, yeah. So, right now there's only a sidewalk on one side. So, um, there will be more sidewalk, but it's not really going to go very far, is the problem. Okay. But the, the, um, the bus stop that's there, kind of near the Moan and Dove, right? That mm -hmm. will that become a draw, you know, like a pull in bus, like, there'll be improvements to the bus stops too, right? There will be. I mean, there's pull-offs for the bus stops now, but they're, they're, it, not, they're, they're, not very, they're not very wide. No. Okay. okay. If I could bring up something that I, I was watching a planning board meeting the other night and somebody brought up in terms of this intersection that if it would remain a, a four-way intersection without a roundabout, if you have a lot of turning lanes that are added, suddenly that becomes a huge amount of pavement for a pedestrian to cross. That seems intimidating. And even if you have a signal and a, and a, um, you know, a bell that would ring, you still have a very little bit of time to get across a lot of lanes of traffic. And I remember that as a pedestrian at the, at the triangle intersection as it used to be. That was, that was a lot of pavement to cross and then when there would be, um, and sometimes people don't always stop for the red light or they kind of are gunning their engines to get started once the light turns green. So it, it might be something to think about that if they go with 
a conventional intersection to think about how many turning lanes to have because that is a problem for pedestrians. So Guilford, if there are additional turning, so at that intersection, there's basically like the one on West Street, there's a traveling, one traveling in each direction, right? So then if you add a turning lane, then there's like a second lane, but just for the turning. And then like a parallel one in the other direction. Um, and so, I mean, sometimes like if there's, if it's many multi lanes, right, then you can add like some kind of median or something, but yeah, I mean, how, how long would the turning lane be? It... Well, so you have 50 feet, you have 50 feet across Pomeroy Lane, West Pomeroy and Pomeroy is 50 feet. Mm -hmm. So then if you want a five foot sidewalk on each side, that's 10 feet of that 50 feet. And then if you want a turn lane and there are two travel lanes and they make them 11s at the intersection, that's 22 feet. And then the turn lane in the middle, it can be as small as 10 feet. So that's how much room you're using up there. And I lost track already, but I think I'm at 42 feet. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So there's four feet of grass on each side of the, of the road right now after we add, add the turn lanes in. Um, and at the current time, there's... Do you have a map, Gilford? You could bring it up. I can stop sharing. Yeah, <laughs> you ready? Sure. Can, can everybody see this? Oh yeah, cool. Yes. Look Thank at you. That. This is... All right, yeah. So while well, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm over here on my other screen drawing things. <laughs> so what is your red, um, now we know your, what is the red circle? So the red circle is basically how much space is, and that's what the space that takes up the, um, the, the, the roundabout, oh, uh, the okay. travel lanes at the roundabout at um, North Pleasant and um, Governor's Drive and East, Eastman Lane. Oh, right. That's how, that's how, that's the diameter of that circle. And then you'd have sidewalks outside that diameter. So you can see that it, actually the Montessori school gets a little, or the, the little school to the, the little school down here gets a little bit of, might lose a space or two, but the sidewalks will be outside that circle. Oh, got it. And then talking about travel lanes. So this is 50 feet all the way across here. Okay. And right now you have basically 10 to 11 feet, 10 feet on this side. And you have 14 feet roughly on this side of grass. So you're, you're going to end up having only four feet on each side. So you do increase the pavement you're walking across for the, the crosswalk by having that. It's 11, 22, and 10 is 32. And then the, that would be 32 feet to get across without any bike lanes or shoulder on the road. And if you want a shoulder on the road for bike lanes, you've used up the four feet, of, the other four right. feet of grass that was left over. And yeah, I, I think that's, I think that should be emphasized because that, I think that people would be surprised to see how much space is going to be taken up by pavement if it's a conventional intersection. They usually but are. It, but at the roundabout, right, it's not going to be super small either. Do you have a little circle for the roundabout, right? It's still. Um, so I mean, the roundabout, your pavement, your, your pavement is going to be two 11 foot lanes or 12 foot lanes that come into the roundabout and then an island in between them right. and then your shoulders because you actually make the bike lanes merge into the, into the right. lanes to go in the roundabout. So you actually will have less traffic or less pavement in there. Okay. And then we got 62 feet on West Street. It's probably 60 feet is really what it is. Well, it says it's probably 70 on the other side. So you'll have a little more space for grass and other amenities on West Street going through with a regular intersection, but you're still gonna have 42 feet, right? No, yeah, about 42 feet of pavement in there if you want 
a bike shot you want shoulders and right. you want turn lane a turn lane and so forth now at one meeting i think you mentioned that there's like the possibility that you could end up having to do turn lanes on the pomeroy lane or west pomeroy lane I and think that, is that very likely or I, I think the counts are going to come out that it says that you should have turn lanes on pomeroy not both of them though, right? Just from, from South Amherst the po on Pomeroy Lane? On both of them. Oh, okay. It, it was, uh, we, we went back and talked to the Mass DOT guy and he pulled up the old traffic study and they were on the edge of having mm -hmm. to put oh. turn lanes in on West Pomeroy when they did this back 20 years ago. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> or actually more than, the, yeah, 20. 20 some years ago, they were on the edge of having to put turn lanes on all four approaches. Okay. Um, Actually, so, the, sorry, the plan that the Mass DOT had many, many millions of years ago, was that for a roundabout then? No. It wasn't, it was just for a, an intersection, but bigger. The, the, the Atkins roundabouts were, the, were pretty much the first roundabouts built in the state. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Really? And it was like pulling teeth. Mm. Well, what year were they built? Um, we started design for them in 2002 or- Oh, okay, wow, they're that old. I think we started design in 2003 and then um, we constructed at about 2007, eight or eight, nine, 10. Mm. Yeah, I think it's an interesting comparison just for the land issue for when you start putting in the turn lanes and how much bigger of an intersection it will make it compared to today. I think people don't realize that. So I do have a question yeah. um, for fellow TAC members. It's also a little bit for Guilford, but I mean, currently there's no bike lanes like on any of these legs. Is that correct? But I, I keep hearing bike lanes being described as part of this project, but I'm, I mean, I do wonder, I mean, both Guilford, as you're saying, for the width that that involves, but then also, does it make sense to have bike lanes that if they're not going to go very far, <laughs> like in some ways, isn't it better just to have, you know, people bicycling the way they are now, sort of? Well, right now there's enough on West Street, there's enough of a shoulder that people bike and bike in that shoulder, and okay. that shoulder extends pretty far. It pinches down at Shea Street. It pinches down, well, it pinches down at Shea Street going north. So people aren't, but it's not really like marked as a bike lane per se. No, it's never really been marked, but right. I mean, you, you can see the old paint here. This is a, mm -hmm. yeah. my cursor there. And then that's the curb basically right there. And this is a better one. That's the paint and there's a curb right there. So that's about five, that's six feet there, roughly. That's going south, right? Yeah. Well, that would be the line, lane going north. Oh, right. right. That's the lane yeah. going north. Okay. But I mean, I, I do this bike, I bike through this a lot. I mean, it's not, I mean, but I am a fearless bike cyclist. So, but certainly this, that road that you're pointing, right, this part of the West Street is just, not not I would not have my children bike there it's not safe you need to right. be really confident um, yeah, but this, but I'm, go on. so go when on, J sorry. when Jason is talking about like a multi-use path where is that located um right now it's on the west side and so it's south of the intersection no it's on both sides of the intersection oh, okay oh right right south, west side the west side right no that's where you are yeah I mean, and he's I, saying I, it's like eight feet, but that's it's the it's not that wide right now, right? So to do eight feet, you would lose grass. Mm -hmm. But then when you, when you talk about this intersection, let me get a just a cleaner map. So th this is the center of the village center, but. You know, the village center kind of starts down here. This is pot wine where we were talking about trying to do something to slow mm -hmm. traffic down here. Right. So if you start here and you work your way up 
north and work your way down, you have a little area where you can add a couple little roundabouts or type of thing, devices to uh -huh. slow people down through the whole whole yeah. intersection and the whole right. village center. I mean, if you if you think one thing is going to do it, it's not. You need to no. kind of line them mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, Would you I, put some? Oh, well, sorry. and I guess sorry. if you didn't have if you didn't have um, a roundabout there, like, are there are there other ways that the traffic can like are there other ways to narrow or calm the traffic? Well, you're looking at like, you're looking at things like that are on um, by Amherst College, which are basically right. splitter islands, um, and they do slow traffic down, but they don't slow it down as much as we'd like. The, they also the damage surrounding buildings too, right? With the seismic, well, they can. I mean, that's at least at home in the UK. They used to put what we call sleeping policemen everywhere until they realized they actually damaged the buildings nearby. And so they've moved yeah. away from that. That was the, the raised, raised crosswalk or raised bump? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's it's the it's the coming down off them with the the cars that actually like damages creates the the disturbance that damages huh. the houses. Hmm. But but you can put in like rumble strips and you could visually slow things down. But then once people start getting used to it, they just don't take any take that into account. Well, with rumble strips and stuff, they oh, yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I mean, because oh. some people refer to, like, somebody in some comment, like, had talked about from this intersection, like, all the way to Crocker Farm, that they feel like it's pretty straight and that people really speed. Right? Oh. And we had talked about trying to make the whole corridor slower. Um, and is that likely to happen at Potwine, Guilford, where there's some kind of roundabout or something there? Yeah, I mean, our, our concept here is to put a roundabout eventually yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Well, you're at Apple. you're back at Pomeroy. This is Pot Wine. Oh, That's okay. Wine, yeah. Oh, sorry. I think there was. It's much bigger. Sorry, I can zoom in a bit. That makes sense. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is Pomeroy, and this is Pot Wine. So this is pretty much oh, entering. Yeah, the there's definitely center. a lag. It's not matching up for me on your screen. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, it's, no, it's like a lag of it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and you're considering putting mini roundabouts into the entrances to the neighborhoods there too? I mean, that's what you would do. I mean, you could put one yeah. here. You might skip this one. Yeah. But you could do this one. And then you yep. could put one here. That's four. Yeah. And then if well, you really so, wanted to yeah. do something in here, you could probably put one at this driveway for this development. But there's not mm -hmm. enough traffic there. It would be maybe at Shea to slow well, things down. Well, and Shea can definitely use something that's pretty yeah. like wide there. That's huge. But, but you're trying to slow. You're trying to create. Uh, you're trying to create an impression on people that you just can't zip around. You know? Right. 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 Well, can't. I mean, you. I mean, I feel like you can do some of that with like signage and like visual. You know, visually making the road just seem narrower and things too. Um, you can you can do some of that with paint signage in my. I think so. Experience gets ignored. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's For probably time. I mean, you can do a lot with paint, but yeah. But once you figure out paint doesn't hurt your car, you keep going right over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Would you put one around about outside of Crocker too? Well, you have a whole. I mean, you have a whole. No. Yeah. You, have a, you actually do have a whole lot of options here. How you want to do yeah. this? I mean, I think something, something at Shea Street would be good. And well, and also you're working on at um, Mill Lane, right? Like Mill yeah. Lane. And, um, Mill Lane may not get a roundabout because of the traffic light. Mm -hmm. No, but just like in terms of, you know, better access and crossings and right. everything. Um, Tra traffic lights close to roundabouts don't work well. Yeah. Right now. So if you were to do um, the rectangular rapid flashing beacons at that intersection with roundabouts, so would they be with each of the crosswalks or how would that work? Um, yes. So I think I've lost my circle, but I'll... So if you're, 
yeah, there's my circle. So if I'm crossing the, the crosswalk here, you push up these two rapid beacons, one facing east, one facing west. When you push the button in either one of those, those will activate. And then this like okay, those, those two will activate and then these two over here and then these two here. Um, they're, they're talking about some sign, which I don't think is very good, but um, I think just having the rapid flash and beacons, we've talked to our supplier and he can actually make the beacon, the button beep. So if you're visually okay. impaired, you can okay. follow the beep. And it'll also tell you once the button's pushed, it'll tell you the lights have been activated. It can't tell you the cars have stopped, so. Right. Um, Holden, and so, Holden has his hand up. Oh, Holden, would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, I just had a quick comment. Um, and again, I'm going into this knowing a lot less than all of you um, on this on this uh, this plan. But it seems like if there is a possibility of adding multiple roundabouts on that section or or multiple areas, like the conversation about maybe adding a bike lane or a sidewalk, but it doesn't go very far. Um, if there's a possibility of adding several of them across a section, it seems worth it uh, to me because then in five years, maybe the conversation becomes, oh, we, we have all these intersections with little bits of sidewalk and little bits of connectivity. Could we get a grant to just link mm -hmm. them all up? Um, and that seems like a, you know, and then in five years, you're not like, well, we could build a sidewalk on the street, but there's no connection between these intersections. Mm -hmm. You kind of restart the conversation. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and I also think, I think even adding these little bits of, of sidewalk, even if they don't extend very far from these intersections, I mean, sure. they get to our bike or, you know, this is part of our bike ped plan, right? right? The street is right on there. And, you know, so then the priority becomes connecting, you mm -hmm. know, absolutely those bits of sidewalk with uh, the next village center. So well, and having the curb cuts, I think, is huge too, right? Because currently there's no curb cuts, like on the that Amherst Montessori School side where the Amherst Montessori School right. used to be. There's some sidewalk there, but there's like no way, you know, if you're if you're on that sidewalk, except for like walking through the grass and so on to get down to the intersection. So Guilford, um, so in terms of sidewalks on West Pomeroy and Pomeroy, then would there be so there would be um, sidewalks on both sides, like through the extent of the intersection, like through Speedway and would there be sidewalks on the West Pomeroy section or not really? There, there'll probably be sidewalks that go a little ways, but not like to very the, far. To the business. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's, there'll be a sidewalk which runs at least on this side by the gas station, at least to where the bus stop is. Okay. And then, oh, so that actually, would be good too, because like currently, like if you don't, and it will be significantly differentiated from like the driving section, because currently, right, the pedestrians are sort of walking in the driveway or the right the car travel lane, like at the gas station or whatever. They don't have like a safe pedestrian spot space. No, okay. I mean, you have to go on the other side. Yeah. Oh. And then, and on Pomeroy. Pomeroy Lane itself, so it would extend like to the Speedway too. Well, Pomeroy has a sidewalk on this side. Right. So there will probably be something, there might be something that goes to like the a Speedway couple. or this just might be. Well, and also there's like the residential in the back, like that big development, that 20C, yeah. Yeah. So you could run mm -hmm. a sidewalk like to there or something. Possibly. Or something. Um, Tracy, how are we doing on your list? Uh, I, mean I think it, I mean, I think it's pretty good. I mean, do I feel like we've covered, I mean, yeah. it seems like we support like a lot of the concepts of the project and we could, um, I mean, does, do people have like any specific concerns they want to bring up? Well, I think so long as we kind of address the big gorillas in the room that everyone keeps bringing up. Yeah, I mean, so, so for me, I still, I still do have some concerns about if it's, I mean, having a roundabout here just with all of these businesses like right at this intersection as well like when i think about other roundabouts in the area they don't or even the ones that we're talking about like pot wine or something like that they don't have so many driveways 
and like access and entry points like so close to the intersection. Are there any? I think you could, so I think you could argue though that that might make people drive more slowly. Yeah, because there is a concentration of of activity and businesses, and it does look more urban than it than a roundabout, say at Atkins, mm -hmm. where there's all this open space around it. Yep. Anyway, I w I would also say that, you know, as to Guilford's point, these are not individual access points, right? No, of course. There are multiple access points for single businesses, so it is not like it's like you know one office for one thing so that people well i mean i and i guess that would be a question too like would would some of them like would the traffic be directed to like go in one way go out another way or something I mean, like for example i think about at university drive now there's like the new um there's a new entrance to uh the medical building across from big y that's on route nine now but it says I was a little surprised it's there, but that it says it right. You can only enter that way, hmm. or you can't, and you can't do any like big left turn across path out of that and out of that exit. And so, just like having the traffic flow in a certain direction, right? Because if people are trying to like say, for example, at like Mission Canteen or something, people are trying to go in and out like different ways. And and if we're talking about like a peak time of day, it seems. To me, the roundabout seems more complicated than a signalized intersection. Not that a signalized intersection isn't as well. Can I share I my mean, screen? at the peak. So please. Um, oh, I get a green. I got the green light. Um, I mean, it might be new here, but it's certainly not new anywhere else. Uh, sorry need to uh, sanitize nice. my screen better. Uh, so, I mean, this is where I'm from. Right. And this is a mini, mini roundabout. That That's just like a raised <laughs> dome that's right aw. there. So we have street, you know, business, street, right. home, sure. uh, street, street, police station, you know, like all of these mm -hmm. in this area. And it works just fine. It's an off-centered mini roundabout. So that's how they get, you know, people to slow down specifically uh, mm -hmm. this is this is coming into town this is going away from town so you know you've already had a slow speed coming in uh, but it really isn't that big of a an issue especially when you have multiple entry and exit points sure now do so, you have crosswalks at that intersection i don't see them uh no but it, i mean in the the uk you kind of just like go wherever you want to so okay uh, <laughs> I mean, there are technically crosswalks like up here and everything, but um, and th these will be oh, no, beaconed. Right. These will be beaconed, like mm -hmm, sure. uh, effectively the same way as Guildford was saying. Right. Yeah. Um, we call it Belisha Beacon, and then you know into town and everything. But uh, just, just this isn't just a random example that I thought about, like of mm -hmm. an intersection with multiple points of entry, very fairly close by. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway. Jaywalking is an American thing. It is, yes, yeah. Oh, for those automobile our, companies. Our, our car, car culture uh, prevails. Um, Kim, you, you, st you still have a quorum. I'm going to yeah. duck out okay. to the district yeah. meeting. Great. So thank yeah. you, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Um, so one thing I was going to, I, I was wondering, actually, I guess, if we want to get it into this letter, um, you know, there's, we don't have to do this, but I'm wondering if we want to state our committee's preference um, and, and put that in the letter. We don't, you know, we don't have to. Sure. I would like to, if we can, please. I think we yeah. should stand on a position. I don't think we should just yeah. put it in a wishy-washy letter. Yeah. I think we need to, um, you know, this isn't anything to one comment that's been previously made. This isn't anything new. This isn't the latest trend. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> it's a uh, there have definitely been some comments. Yeah. 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 I, I, and I it's really interesting listening to, you know, not listening, reading those, you know, Kim, when right. you wrote your reply and Tracy, <laughs> thank you for putting your stuff in the indie because 
just kind of the 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 the, the immediate reaction to that is very wow. interesting you know and well, every time I hear somebody say, and it's a rotary, I'm like, no, I'm like, oh. you know, I'm like, no, but then also like, you know, even when like, actually uh, Catherine Bell, who's from England, she's like, well, I'm from England and, and roundabouts are anti-traffic calming. <laughs> I was like, really? uh, yeah. Well, and, I Phil, mean, and Phyllis Lair, she says roundabouts are terrible, and yeah, it just depends just, where you put it. I mean, they're, they're the, you know, anyway. well, it's the, yeah, but you go to town, like, um, here, actually, let me um like a so i mean so there is this question i mean i do like a lot of what roundabouts are doing i mean i think that i mean as i was i was talking to kim a little bit um between meetings and i mean and i really do and as i presented last time too i really do feel that either of these um options will really greatly improve the intersection mm -hmm. because it's actually I mean, I don't, I don't go that way very often as a pedestrian. And when I actually look closely at it, it is really terrible. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like so I mean, bad and yeah. how it's been so bad for so long. It's, I mean, I'm so glad that we're fixing it. So I think we could even lead our letter to like, thank you, like thank the town for its like commitment to making this like accessible because it's terrible. Um, yeah, and we, we have, the, you know, the option that opportunity now with buying Hickory Ridge to promote a lot more walking and a lot more right. you know, outdoor activities there so we need to make it more accessible for everybody so that you know we're not talking about like a ring road big roundabout sort of thing we're talking about a very you know accessible right urban area roundabout that will just help to calm the traffic i mean yeah i mean i, I do I, have I mean, concerns to the people who i mean i can see where like for you know as a parent or I mean, I worry about this a little bit of triangle too, like the playground is right there. And I mean, say you did have a younger person or, um, you know, somebody who was, you know, visually impaired or something, and they did want to cross like the fact, I mean, I still feel a little uncomfortable, even with the flashing signals and so on, that there is never any time, like when the traffic stops completely. I mean, and that's the same as any, uh, any crosswalk too, right? No, but I mean, like if you had a four way intersection, right, you can have all the traffic goes one way and all the traffic goes another way. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people like Myra Ross was explaining to me, um, like when you're and actually she was actually saying it's not actually that great, like downtown, when you have all the traffic stop, all the cars stop and that it's all pedestrians. Because like if you are like she's completely blind and so you actually need those cues of you know, where the traffic is and where they're going for you to realize where you are walking, you know, yeah, just, the whole, the whole so thing. it actually helps. It helps her if the traffic goes in one direction, mm -hmm. then she knows like where the traffic is and then it stops and then the traffic goes in the other direction. And I mean, I do, I do still hear that concern from people mm -hmm. um, just because I think, I mean, it is, you know, it is true that, uh, because it's because the speeds are lower like there's less say like fatalities and less like serious crashes but i can still see you know people getting hit and and one thing i worry about with roundabouts too i worry about this summit intersections is that you know for drivers and i work on this with driver training a lot is like where are drivers looking you know when they're entering right. an intersection and so um at a roundabout you're looking in the direction of the like where the other traffic is coming from that you need to yield and merge into and the thing is so if you are a pedestrian and you're going in the opposite direction that driver isn't necessarily going to see you like they're going to be focused in the roundabout they're going to be looking left as they merge in right and if you're a pedestrian coming from the right you could easily they could easily run into you um somebody i know brought this yeah. up at somebody i know brought this up at fearing and that person suggested that instead of a yield sign at fearing as fearing as you're merging into the university drive roundabout that instead of a yield that you actually have a stop sign mm -hmm. because like the university drive i'm just that's what this because because the university drive path is right there and so you're going to have a lot of traffic coming from the right like while the drivers are 
But that's back. where the, the flashing lights come in, right? I mean, that's the attraction getter as you're coming in. If somebody actually wants to cross the road, use the lights, right? get you across. Because that, that's you know, the, 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 as you're approaching, you are visually scanning the area to understand your direction of travel to start with, right? Mm -hmm. You need to understand, uh, understand the direction of travel. So you need to understand how you need to get around the thing. And then you go and look to see whether traffic is coming or not. So in that initial scan, people are using the the flashing lights. You will pick that up. As, but, I mean, Hopefully. assuming that the flashing lights are in yeah. the visual picture that you're using to do. No, you know, it's true. They're like ten feet tall. You're not going to see it. But if they put them at the right level, you know. Well, and I think too, they. I mean, some of the the beacons you're like as you're approaching, you're seeing stuff flashing, so you know you have to like slow down before the crosswalk. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But. Yeah. But I mean, well, I, even as a pedestrian around town, like there's intersections, like where if I'm walking in the opposite direction from the traffic, like I've had people hit me, just it, you know, just crossing a minor street because the because right. the drivers focus on the traffic that they have to merge into and not me walking from the opposite direction. So, right. well, I think one of the keys is if you can pull the crosswalk away somewhat from right. the roundabout to give more space for the driver right. to enter. Yeah. And there's only that lane that the driver is looking ahead. Right. I, I don't know if this has been brought up in any of the meetings, but as a biker and pedestrian, I find the roundabout outside of Look Park in Florence to be a really excellent one. I, I've used it many, many times and I've never felt that a driver was going too fast or that they didn't see me. There's something about the layout of that one that seems particularly safe to me. And um, I have a you question. You could submit about... that as a comment. You could say, I yeah. love the Look Park intersection. Uh, Bruce, do you actually go into the intersection, into the travel lanes when you are biking? Are you, you know, if you say no, if you're going I'm, to take a I'm a there. really careful biker. I, I use the pedestrian sidewalk. OK. OK. So, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't go into the traffic. I, I, that intimidates me anywhere I am. I always try to stay on a path yeah. if I can. Yeah. I, I'm just curious, that's all. Excuse, uh, just one oh. second. Holden, did you ha have a comment? Um, yeah, well, I actually have to go. So I just yes. wanted to say thanks for having me. Okay. Um, also, I, I, I did notice on the website, it looks like there might be a vacancy. I didn't know what the yes. process for filling that would be and or if like, I guess if there was a description of duties for members of the committee. Um, I didn't know who I would contact about more information about that. So there is an application. I think you can just apply. On, isn't that, am I, am, I think I'm saying the truth, right? Guilford, yeah, on, on the um, Amherst.gov site. And you can say specifically that you're interested in the TAC. And yes, there is a, um, at least one vacancy. And um, so hold in there's a, it's called a citizen activity form. And you use the same form in applying to like any of the town committees and you just express that you're interested in being on the committee. And now you can serve on the committee, I think, once you're a resident. I don't think okay. you're eligible until you are a resident. Um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and there has been a vacancy for a while, but like hopefully. So this committee falls under the town manager. So the town manager would be the person who would review. And there's a committee that helps with this that would review applications and then interview and fill the vacancies. Okay. And a lot of the um, a lot of these committees have terms that end in June because like that's when the fiscal year ends. And so like there will be some additional vacancies on this committee in June. Yeah. Okay. And and I did see the the vision statement uh, and kind of like committee charge. Would there be more specific documentation for the the tasks for committee members in particular or so kind of okay so I think one thing is that that's a little bit of a question for the town manager because the current charge was created when we had a select board in form of government and now we have a town council and and um so the TAC this committee has been working on revising the charge yeah. to sort okay. of reflect that um the council which is now the executive body for the town that they are the keepers of the public way um, and they're they're taking that role in like a very proactive way, and so some of our original charge had to do with things with the public way and sort of divvying some of that up. And our primary role is advisory, okay. advisory to the council and to the okay. town manager. So great, sounds good. Well, I'll read more on that. And thanks again Thank for having me. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you for your interest. 
Um, I'd like to just bring up something. If we would say in this letter that we, we would recommend a roundabout, I think it might also be helpful to say, but if we go, if the decision is made to go with a conventional intersection, are there any particular points we want right. to make if we go in that, in that that's direction? A, that's a great well, point. I, first of all, I think we should probably, you know, vote like, you know, I assume it's an, an unanimous vote that we are vote, but we should do that nonetheless. And now like Aaron isn't here. I mean, well, we could, no, and but we can only do it with those of us that are here right now. So could we also just say that like a majority of the the majority of the tax supports it? I mean, I well, that's know. what we could say, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think I would say that, especially because, you know, Aaron was talking about it, too. Right. But, but we can only do with what's here right now, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you could make you know, sure. that as saying at our uh, April 1st meeting, the vote was four to zero to support a preference for a roundabout. Uh, since we don't know which way Aaron would vote, I don't, I don't know if you need to say majority. I think you just say. Yeah, what the, what vote, the was. vote was. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I move think we, that, yeah. I'll move that we, we recommend a roundabout with a caveat that if they choose another type of intersection, we will list some things that we think are important. Can we say, um, can I move to amend that slightly? Sure. Just, just to say that we would um, recognize the town's choice, if it is, right. you know, a different thing. Good. Um, so we, we're not just like, we're only sticking to roundabouts. We strongly recommend a roundabout, but we recognize the town's prerogative yeah. to choose a different one and here are our recommendations yes i think that's that's a very, good. That's a very good way of wording yes yes good words um, and maybe we want to we can talk about specifics as bruce suggested um i don't know i think i would abstain from that i just i still do have questions so i don't feel like okay so ready we to commit to three three to one uh, okay. well, i'm abstaining or three whatever. zero three, one zero yeah. one, three, zero, one. <laughs> Okay. But can we, to Bruce's point, you know, as we're drafting this letter, can we, um, like, if there is a signalized intersection, what would we, what specific, do we have any specific recommendations? I, I would recommend some sort of a median, if possible, so that when you're crossing, you're not crossing so much pavement at one time. I would suggest turn lanes. Well, that's in the plan already, right, Guilford? I know, but we would recommend that. No, of that, course. Right? All right. I mean the 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 technically the um, roundabouts in the plan too. So no, I would suggest that the the removing of the turn on red, right turn on right. red. No, of course, right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, and of course, like you'd still want the enhanced like crosswalks and um, the curb cuts and like all those other right. things. Yes. I mean, would we say, I mean, to the point about there being such a large width of pavement, would we would we say anything about like on road bike lanes or, you know, anything in terms of like trying to decrease? I mean, I would love it if there if there is a signalized intersection, like some way to calm just the intersection in um, more narrowly and like still as another way of calming traffic right. or could there be like other measures as you're approaching the intersection that would calm traffic and encourage people to well we could we could say that that's what we would suggest right because you're that right. we still want people to have to slow down traffic calming um, measures such as you know islands or or the bike lanes. If you have bike lanes, then you're you're narrowing the roads too, right? Yeah, no, but well, the bike good. lanes are like if they're flush with the pavement, it just looks like more pavement. <laughs> you know, it looks like yeah. more road pavement. How about painted bike lanes during the the approaches and through the intersection? Or if there's some like, so on University Drive, there's actually like a buffer area or something. Oh yeah, that's right. That like- And it's painted. I mean, the other fine. thing that like, I mean, in some intersections, what you do is you make the curb, like you kind of pull the curb in a little yeah. bit to like make it less. Well, we could say that we, 
we would I'm, support some kind of traffic calming, road narrowing, toward, right. as as the as the um inter, you, you approach the intersection. On I guess on both directions with west, yeah. right? So also to just indicate that it's still a village center and you still need to right. slow down. Yes. All right. Uh, I think it's that we need to basically say that a signalized intersection alone is not the answer. You need to have additional traffic calming along with a signalized okay. intersection. Well, and, and safer, safer pedestrian. Right, right, because of that. Yeah, right. But just putting a signal there doesn't do what we right. want it to do. Well, right. So the signalized intersection, and if you have a left turn lane, like it would address the queuing and things like that, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't get to your safety. It wouldn't get to the safety part. No. It wouldn't. It wouldn't permanently slow down traffic. It would only slow no, down of course. traffic on a red, and you know right, all these right. additional things where we're looking to try and create this more harmonious place. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah. I mean, so a signalized intersection alone doesn't calm the traffic, which is true. So what, that's what's so fascinating about like in so many of these meetings and people are like the signal only the signalized intersection is you know that slows traffic down and i mean it stops some traffic but then i mean to kim's point about when you know at other traffic can drive really fast yeah yeah exactly this might be outside the scope of this current project but i also think whatever is done there it would really be helpful to have enhanced lighting, street lighting. Yes, for sure. Yeah. When you see brighter lights, you automatically think it's a more built up area. That's a good point, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. So regardless of what type we suggest. Mm -hmm. increase and, and also more urban street lamps instead of the tall highway lamp lights during that little section, if they could put in some new street lamps so it'd be closer. Are you to saying the, more like village well, center type yes, lamps exactly. or something? Yes. I mean, Guilford, is there a budget in the project to do things related to like kind of intersection aesthetics with lamp lights and all that? I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there okay. all right. Well, I think um, so yeah. I can I can try to put something together right. with like the main points. And so we want to submit it. So TSO is meeting on Thursday, the 8th. Right. And I would suggest that we send them a final draft by Wednesday, just so that it's in their packet and they get a chance to review it. Um, so in that case, I mean, I guess if I send out a draft, hopefully on the weekend, but if I send something out on Monday and people got back to, yep. or Kim, I don't know, would you like, would you like to be like the keeper of the edits or something if you can edit and people can send you edits and sure or yeah or we can get we can rope Aaron back into it can, <laughs> so. can we just do like a google docs or something where we can just share can't we I think um, there's like limits with like yeah, yeah open so it is really oh, okay. cumbersome but I know can no I can I can be the keeper I... of the edits then. <laughs> I will be the keeper of the edits that's okay. totally fine the people can just I mean their edits. you can't like have conversations so you need to like have one person and then go back and forth that's fine and... <laughs> that's fine okay sorry about that <laughs> So when do we, um, so you're, you'll, you, when I'll make sure, I mean, I'll try to do something sooner, but I would make sure that it was done before the end of the weekend and then. Okay. And then you'd send it out and we would need to have that people would so, have to get their edits to me. By like I, Monday night. Monday. Yeah. Monday PM. Yeah. Okay. And we'll write that on the document or whatever. Yeah. So it has it. And then you would um, transmit it then to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you both um, for all your work with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much, guys. Um, before we go, I uh, there's what I because you know we it's six twenty three. I was hoping to get through the um approving the minutes. Let's do that. Yes. Uh, did we because lose Amber all, already? I think we lost Amber already. All four of us um were at all three of these meetings. Do you all have the um the three? So it's from um March eighteenth. March 4th and February 18th. I've looked yep. through these already um, and I don't have any um, significant comments. Um, other, um, so 
I move to um, accept the, the three minutes as provided by Amber. Yep. A second. Great. I. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. We all okay. So you know. Yeah, we're all good. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kim, you didn't have any edits or anything you said. No, um, I did not. But what I did did notice while I was looking through these <laughs> was that. Um, uh, I, I and and I guess this kind of goes to you know kind of our committee comments perhaps at this moment. Um, someone from the public co um, contacted me, um, and I've forgotten this individual's name, but um, they were wondering about sidewalk um, priorities because apparently um, they had heard Guilford say that um, the priorities for sidewalks included North. Pleasant and I forgot the other one, but the others, what I don't East know. Pleasant. East, East Pleasant. Pleasant. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, this is something we've, we've talked about extensively in these meetings. And, um, you know, so I, I, Guilford was right in saying those, t saying these things at whatever public meeting Guilford was at. But um, this person was asking about um, a, a, a priority list or a project list or something. And, and I think I, I was looking at the February 18th notes and I had said, um, pro one thing we had had on there was a project list being put on the website. And I don't think that that has been done. And I would like to know, it has not, correct? Yeah. Well, so and Aaron I think had it would mentioned- would be really nice just to, to put, put that so that yeah. people can access that information. You know, it's, cause I don't think this is like, it's not C, confidential information it should be out there and that would alleviate the um the concerns of you know because they're worried that we have some prioritization list that we're not sharing and i i think you know we should share what we can um and so, so guilford it, there was a meeting where aaron said that it was going to go up on the website that he had shared it with somebody to go on the website and is that there. is that a big deal to get it on the website or Aaron wanted to take that page, which had all the people who kind of called in. Okay. Uh, all the little requests. You want to put that that list on the website? No, that's not the list we want. <laughs> no. no, that's not the list you we, want. We could, you we want could my actually, list. Yeah, that's what we put, want. Your we list. could put both lists, but um, I think that well, the priority list is One is your is list. One is my list. Right. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you know, at least maybe our top 10 projects or something. I feel like we should just put something up there. And well, we, and also Guilford, so I think I had emailed you about this as well, but because Eve and I were working on this subcommittee and there's this UMass student who was gonna help, and I know you've talked about hiring the consultant and so on to work on the complete streets plan, but you had mentioned for that plan, you'd probably have like 15 to 20 projects to prioritize and have the consultant like work on like the cost estimates and so on. So if we could have that list too, just, like identified or I don't know how much that list varies from the other list we've talked about. Maybe we could talk about this at the next meeting, but just- Yeah, why don't we talk about it more? Okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. I just- Let's try to make that the next. <laughs> in reviewing our minutes, I was reminded, it, it, just a conversation kind of came full circle. So I just wanted to- um, Yeah, was she, reminded. she lives on East Pleasant Street. Oh, this person that is con because she said she contacted you too, and I wasn't sure. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, but then the, the problem we're running into and the problem staff is having is someone asked for something, and then we find out they're from the media, and they're actually writing all these articles about it, and they're publishing these articles. The, the media has kind of like become this gray, blurry place. It's not... What do you mean? I... I like I'm not I'm not authorized to speak for the town right 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 yeah um so th yeah. those things are supposed to come from the authorized spokesman from the town and people just ask for stuff and it just gets sent out that's um yeah which is why I didn't I didn't respond because I wasn't sure how I would respond to the how I'm supposed to respond to this person but it just reminded me that we we had talked about this before yeah. just you know and I feel like it would just alleviate you know, the concerns, you know, well, I don't know. People well, and it is part of our charge. It's part of our charge to like have a prioritized list, right? And we go over it. It, it is, but then again, how we post it and and how it gets put out there. Um, no one's really said how to do that yet with the yeah. town government. And 
So it's like, we're, so I, I, as an employee, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I just, it's like you as a UMass employee, you just can't make a statement or release stuff that no. the right. university doesn't like sign off on. Yeah. No, of course. Um, you can neither confirm nor deny. No. <laughs> Well, I we think, but I think, I mean, one thing, right, with public meetings all being recorded, <laughs> is there's like a lot more things that people can yes, I mean, trace back now. I mean, it used to be that like meetings would just happen where there wouldn't necessarily be that many people there. And now if, if the town is posting like every meeting. And then so. technically everything we show is supposed to be a public document of the meeting. Right. And again, no one's given guidance on how we're going to post all these things and, this, sure. and so forth. So it's we're just we're just all the committees are trying to catch up i think yeah. some committees are well, more formal and they know how they want to do it or they have regulations like planning and all those but right. we're not as formal and we haven't been no. given any guidance i mean so i think with the priority list i mean that should be an item i guess for next time but um but also just that we could like review it we haven't reviewed it in a while right we could review it and like take a vote on it or a review right. of the priority list we could put that right. on the next agenda yeah so. Or the pro or the upcoming projects for the exactly. projects or whatever, you know? Okay. But like the list that you're going to have in the complete streets plan when it goes to the state, like that's going to all be public too. So right. it would be good to see what that looks like. And everything can say draft and like unofficial, but yeah. I mean, I think our committee as an advisory committee can still look at the documents. Excuse me. I, I have to ring off. Now yeah, I no, I think we should. Okay, do the official, you know, um, I move make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Who seconds? All right, I I'll do. second. Thank you. Thanks All right, for thank you. coming. Yeah, All right. Bye. 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 Bye, Guilford. Bye. Thanks for your help, Guilford. Great. Welcome. See ya. See ya. Bye.